afternoon on this first day of the year, January 1st, 2016. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofed and these are today's headlines. Millions welcome in the new year with champagne and cheers, although tightened security puts a damper on festivities in Europe and Germany were evacuated stations over an imminent terror threat. Storm Vladimir blankets the high altitudes with snow on New Year's Day in Lebanon with snowfall reaching altitudes of 700 meters in Edinia and also blocked roads in several mountainous regions. Maronite Patriarch Sadadai criticizes the political indifference of parliamentary blocs to elect a president one month after the announcement of a productive initiative to end the impasse. Good afternoon to all our viewers tuning in on this New Year's Day. Millions welcomed in the new year with champagne and cheers, although Thai insecurity put a damper on festivities in Europe where Germany evacuated stations over an imminent terror threat and a huge hotel fire sparked panic in Dubai. In New York, around 6,000 people were watching over a bustling Times Square as Mayor Bill Blasio flicked the switch, sending the city's massive glittering glass ball down in the final seconds of 2015. Since the Paris attacks in November, which saw Islamic State group slaughtering 130 people in a series of gun and suicide attacks, Europe has been on high alert, with France and Belgium cancelling their traditional New Year fireworks displays in their respective capitals. In France, more than 100,000 police were deployed to guard celebrations, as defiant Parisians turned out on the Champs-Élysées to greet 2016 in the biggest public gathering since the November 13 attacks. And in Belgium, police were holding five people over an alleged New Year plot in Brussels as they also announced the arrest of a tenth suspect linked to the Paris attacks. In Lebanon, Storm Vladimir that began two days ago blankets the high altitudes with snow this New Year's Day. The snowfall has reached altitudes of 700 meters in Edinia and also blocked roads in several mountainous regions such as Nimdine, Kvarbnine and Bikasfrine. The Dinia municipality is working on reopening the roads in the area. Temperatures have meanwhile ranged between 0 and 3 degrees in these regions. The internal security forces announced later on Friday that the Dahr al Baida road is completely blocked due to the snow and poor visibility. Similar scenes were witnessed in Kvarzebian, Hadas, Baalbak, Bshadre, Tanurin, and Erez. The Thaos also enjoyed a snowfall with a heavy layer blanketing the Shaba farms. Maronite Patriarch Shadadai is criticizing the political indifference, as he claims, of parliamentary blocs to elect a president a month after the announcement of a productive initiative to end the impasse. The height of this political negligence is due to the stubbornness of political and parliamentary blocs in electing a president who is the only simulator for cabinet and parliament. Dai said this addressing worshippers during New Year's Mass at Kirke. He lashed out at what he calls the outrageous carelessness projected by the political elite regarding the state, its constitutional institutions, the economy, the people, its rights and fate. Just to remind you, former Prime Minister Saad Hariri backed MP Sleiman Fanjia's candidacy for president as part of an initiative to reach a comprehensive political settlement aid at ending the presidential stalemate and reviving parliament and the government. We have with us today in our studios, social, how are we going, we're going to call you activist, yes, activist and vocal activist. prowess, Ms. Sara Asaf is in our studios, civil society activist to talk about what's happening in the country and how this year has ended. Thank you for joining me, Sara. Thank you, Yumna, and happy 2016. Happy New Year to you. Uh, we were talking a little bit before this uh, bulletin began and we were talking about how this is uh, the first time in a very long time that New Year's all over the world uh, were overcast by the shadow of terror threats from uh, Jakarta to the US of course in Lebanon as well as in Paris so how did you feel about that? I mean of course it's sad it's a bit expected but it's very sad but I mean um, since the Syrian crisis happened and um, the amount of, of injustice and of unfairness that, you've, w that we've been seeing all around um, was really, um, um, you know, it was easy to predict that more terrorism was bound to happen because whenever you have such injustice, people are going to react in a very violent way. 
Um, of course, it's sad to see that, and, um, and we're hoping that in 2016, maybe at least the um, Paris attacks really opened up the eyes of the world about this major issue that is yes. terrorism and the major threat that might be um, um, growing over time. Uh, this is something that has become a global issue, as you said, since the Paris attacks, because it seems like the world has finally put this as a priority and has turned its attention to ISIS as well as the Middle East. Exactly. Can this be a positive step forward? Can they eliminate ISIS? I mean, this is a, this is a problem that's going to need a very, it's going to take a long time to find a solution to. I think, yes, it, it's going to take a long time, but also, I mean, from what we are seeing, military interventions all over in order to try and weaken ISIS, I'm not sure this is the right thing to do. I mean, of course, it's important to try and weaken ISIS militarily, but I think also that the power of ISIS comes from the fact of its, comes actually from its ability to recruit. And the ability to recruit in order for, in order for um, the U.S. and their allies, for, for, for France, for everyone to really be able to weaken ISIS, you need to um, um, weaken this ability to recruit. And the only way to weaken this ability is to actually try and inst instigate more justice around in all the Arab countries and mainly here we're talking about Syria because this is where the crisis is at its peak. This the crisis is at its peak and of course the Syrian civil war has spilled into Lebanon uh, a day after a day before sorry the Paris attacks Lebanon was struck in the heart of Beirut as well exactly. with a uh, twin suicide bombing that left over a hundred people dead no sorry 46 people dead over 200 people wounded um, you know, we keep talking about Lebanon and how unstable it is, and I want to bring it in to this initiative, which our former Prime Minister Saad Hariri had talked about, that would have him become Prime Minister and Sulaiman Fanjib become his candidate for presidency. It was, of course, put on hold after receiving a lot of opposition from the country's three main Christian parties, which include uh, the Lebanese forces, the Qatar party, and, of course, the party of Michel Aoun. FPM, yes. So, do you think they are committed to electing a president? I think actually the initiative stopped for now or is frozen for now, not because mainly of the opposition that it got from the Christian parties, but because of the opposition that it got from Hezbollah. Because the main um, decision maker here in Lebanon today is Hezbollah. And it's Hezbollah uh, who until now is, um, uh, is being very clear about um, um, its position. Uh, um, um, against this deal that was um, about that that Saad Hariri tried to, you know, negotiate. Um, I think that it's a good for for once. It's a good thing that Hezbollah is against it. Um, I why do Why do you think that? What is your uh, view? Well, on this I, I have no doubts about the sincere um, 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 intention. Yes, intentions of Saad Hariri, and I'm sure he wants peace and prosperity for Lebanon. But I do not believe that giving it up all to, to March 14 is the right way. And I do not believe that getting a president that is so close to Bashar al-Assad and so close to March 8 is a solution. I think that um, had this deal happened, and if Saad Hariri would have come back to Lebanon as a prime minister, chances are he would have been toppled a few months later, like it happened after the Doha agreement. And if this happens, then uh, March 8 would have the presidency, the government, and the parliament. So I think it's a big risk, and I think this deal is not the right thing to do. I think we need to stand our ground and try to um, um, search for a centrist president and try to um, um, lobby uh, for uh, uh, the international community to also be with us on this, on, on this level. Um, um, and I'm hoping totally that Hezbollah would just stand their ground and not go for this uh, deal. All right, but well we have to you. take a quick break now, but we will be talking the evacuation deal and the waste crisis with Saad Asaf when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to our viewers. We have with us Ms. Saad Asaf, civil society activist, who is commenting on the situation in Lebanon as well as a recap of the year. Sarah, the UN Borkut deal under which hundreds of wounded fighters and civilians were evacuated from towns in Syria via Lebanon uh, a few days ago sparked a lot of further divisions within the government, yes. with some ministers saying they only heard about the matter from the news. This was very controversial. Uh, as our viewers may know, uh, there were fighters that were evacuated from Syria to Turkey and from Turkey to uh, Beirut. 
Uh, it was a deal that was uh, put in place and brokered by Turkey and Iran and that had Nusra Front and ISIS dealing with Hezbollah. A lot of Lebanese and, as well as official leaders said this was not permissible, um, although it was a UN broker deal and it was legitimate. Uh, can Lebanon be becoming the center for these transfers to happen? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, can you think of a better country to become the center of such transfers? We have nothing. We have no government, no state, uh, no parliament. Nothing is working. It's the, best, it's, it's the best country to do such deals. For me, I mean, everyone was so surprised about this deal and everyone like, uh, had some uh, very um, 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 uh, strong thoughts about it. I think it's just another example of how, I mean, especially what happened during the deal, I mean, what happened during the evacuation when Hezbollah went, took over the airport and you had Hezbollah flags and Hezbollah officials all over the airport, you know, and no one from the Lebanese government there. It's just another example of how there is no state in Lebanon and how Hezbollah is controlling the country. In, in, some, in some ways, a lot of people say Hezbollah is holding the country hostage. Do you, do you agree? There were flights that were stopped uh, in the airport. Um, there were people that were not allowed to fly because obviously there was this deal happening. I do believe that Hezbollah is just another uh, form of terrorism, but just a, a, a terrorism that is more civilized and a terrorism that is much uh, uh, better planned. Uh, but I think that Hezbollah is another form of terrorism and yes, that they are controlling Lebanon. A, a bigger problem this year, believe it or not, was and I think it may be actually the one that caused the most chaos was the waste management crisis. Yeah. Uh, environmentalists and engineers are warning that the cabinet plan, the recent cabinet plan to export Lebanon's trash is wasteful and morally irresponsible. They're saying the country should keep its trash within its borders, but we have, we have, we've had this landfill open since 1997 that's been overflowing. Uh, we may not be seeing as much waste on the streets in Beirut, but it's all over different areas and it's piling up and now there's winter and of course the health minister uh, argued and said that it could be causing eventual, if not already, um, ha hazardous and health risks. Your comments on this issue? Again, um, <laughs> it's, it's another example that we're moving towards being a failed state in Lebanon. We're not able to come up with any solutions. The government is there. Um, it's supposedly a government of national unity. Everyone is, except the Lebanese forces, uh, all the parties are there. And yet they are not really able to do anything. But what about the protesters, right? Because I want to end it, I want to try to end it on, on a positive mark here. There were protests that were taking place. Yes. We made headlines all over the world with people going to the streets, asking for their government to do something about it. Um, now it's been a little bit late to rest. But what do you think, how do you think this will unfold in 2016? I think even on, in the terms of the protest that happened, I cannot really be positive about it because, I mean, um, um, I think it was not properly managed. Um, I think they could have done a much better job. Um, I believe that um, the persons who started the protests, mainly you think, um, were supposed to be um, to, 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 to work more as a brand keeper, if you want, and make sure not to have other people come around. We started going to the streets. I went to all the protests. I mean, the first three or four protests I went, I was there. But um, I was there because I have a problem with the whole issue of waste management in Lebanon. But suddenly we started seeing that people were going to the streets just to, you know, protest against uh, Zaytuna Bay or to protest against um, um, Beirut. So, I mean, uh, protest against downtown and against Solidaire. 30 which seconds, there. Yeah, they politicized it in a way that it became completely obsolete very quickly. And now they're not really being able to work as a pressure group again. We are recapping the year with civil society activist Sarah Asaf. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This Yuna. is for hoping for a brighter and better 2016. And on that note, I will remind you of our headlines. The UN broke a deal under which hundreds of wounded fighters. Oh, I'm sorry. Millions of people celebrate New Year's all over the world although it is overcast by terror threats from Jakarta to the United States. Storm Vladimir blankets the high altitudes with snow on New Year's Day, and snowfall reaching altitudes of 700 meters and blocking roads in several mountainous regions. And Maronite Patriarch Shadadai criticizes the political indifference of parliamentary blocs to elect a president.
Those wrap up your headlines on this 1st of January. Have a lovely 2016, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.